Hello and welcome into another episode of Locked on Wolves. This is the post-game podcast. The Timberwolves fell to the Denver Nuggets in an exciting game on Wednesday. They led for much of it, but the offense fell apart down the stretch. We'll break down what happened. Uh, also a great Jaden McDaniels game. Uh, how the Wolves did defensively against a fantastic offensive team in the Denver Nuggets. We're going to break it all down here on the show. Welcome in. You are Locked on Wolves. You are Locked on Timberwolves. Your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Wolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Locked On Wolves. Happy Thursday, everybody. And uh, not a victory Thursday, unfortunately. It almost was. The Wolves played well. They led for much of the game against Denver on Wednesday. But down the stretch, just not good enough. We'll get into it here in just a moment. A big thank you, first of all, for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Lockdown Wolves is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. You can also watch the show on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. You can follow on Twitter at Lockdown T Wolves and at B Beacon. And that's with two B's, two E's, C K E N. All right. Uh, so the Wolves fell to the Nuggets by four on Wednesday. Of course, just a couple of weeks after beating Denver in Minnesota, Denver won their seven games in between. And uh, this was, I think, seven games in between. I believe this is win number eight in a row for the Nuggets on a second night of a back to back for them. Of course, the Wolves are on the first night of a back to back or were on the first night. They play tonight now in Minneapolis. Um, so difficult, you know, they had the rest advantage, of course, no Rudy Gobert, also no Austin Rivers, obviously no Carl Anthony Towns, no Jordan McLaughlin. So very shorthanded, more so than the Nuggets, but the Nuggets did have the rest advantage. And Minnesota led for most of this game. The first quarter was actually, I thought, pretty ugly for the Wolves, but they somehow only trailed by three. They had like eight turnovers in the first quarter, it was six or eight, too many turnovers in the first quarter. Uh, just an all around kind of sloppy performance. Jokic had a ton of points. It felt like a million points in the first quarter of this game. The Wolves just did not seem ready to play for big chunks of that first frame. And Nas Reed struggled with foul trouble. Um, but somehow the Wolves were only down three. And then in the second quarter, they pushed ahead and actually led by five points at halftime. Uh, my biggest takeaways for this game are really related to what the Wolves, th there were a couple things the Wolves did extremely well. And, and a couple of things they did really terribly, and that ultimately led to their downfall, right? So what they do really well in this game? I thought they actually played pretty good half-court defense. Now, they fouled too much, and uh, you know I, I mentioned this on Twitter. This game would have been a lot more fun if there were less foul calls, and that's not necessarily a, a complaint. That, like I'm not saying that the Wolves were called too many for too many fouls. I'm saying that, in general, there were too many foul calls in this game. I don't think it was lopsided. But the Wolves committed 27 personal fouls. The Nuggets committed 19. The Nuggets shot 32 free throws. The Wolves shot 28 free throws. Just too many whistles in this game. Um, but besides defending without foul, like the actual half-court defense itself was functional for the Wolves against a really good offensive team. And I know Denver scored 122 points, but that brings me to one of the things they didn't do well, and that was transition defense. Denver had two or three baskets when they ran after a made basket or a dead ball an out of out of bounds play on the other end of the floor in the backcourt, right? Not a, not an ATO, not after a timeout, but like after a made basket or a turnover, you know, a, a dead ball turnover, they were taking the ball out of bounds and sprinting down the floor before the Wolves had a set defense. And we've seen teams do this throughout the year against the Wolves running on, on uh, defensive rebound situations, just beating the Wolves back in transition. It happens far too often. And like, if we wanted to, Name one thing. I would say, I would argue that that was the one thing that led to the Wolves' demise in this game was giving up those. It was at least, it was at least four, four, it was four or six points. It was at least two or three baskets the Nuggets got, and the Wolves lost this game by four. Um, that was the biggest issue for me in this game uh, for the Wolves. Something else that they did well, I thought the Wolves' half court offense was very good, and Denver's generally not a great defensive team. They've been much better of late. Um, but really regardless of who was on the floor for Denver, like they were obviously much better in this game with Jokic on the floor. They were, then was a plus 21 with Jokic on the floor. And I think they were like a minus 17 with him off the floor in this game. But in general, the wolves scored kind of at will. Uh, they had two different quarters where they scored 33 or more points, 33 in the second quarter, 35 in the third, the Wolves shot a hair under 52% for the game themselves, 37 and percent from three. 
got to the line 28 times. Um, Kyle Anderson did a really good job of picking apart the defense. Once again, 13 points, eight assists for slow-mo. Um, the Denver did go zone a little bit it, and, and it was actually a couple of possessions. I don't even think Anderson was on the floor when the nuggets ran most of their zone in the third quarter. I believe it was. And Jane McDaniels was a big part of breaking it down. McDaniels actually led the wolves in scoring in this game. We'll talk a lot more about him later. 18 points on seven of 10 shooting for McDaniels, three block shots on the defensive end of the floor, a couple of assists. He did have three turnovers, but this was a good Jane McDaniels game. He was a ton of fun to watch. Ant was okay. Um, he couldn't get a three to fall. He was Oh, four outside the arc, but like he was so quiet early. And then late in the second quarter, he kind of went off and then he kind of faded a little bit again towards the end of the game. Only three free throw attempts. That would be my one gripe with the officiating is I felt like Ant probably could have gotten a couple more whistles. Uh, but I mean, if Ant scores his average or something closer to his average or just shoots the ball a little better from the perimeter, that's another big if. But I mean, the Wolves probably win the game if that's the case, right? I mean, I don't I don't think it's unreasonable to expect that Ant would have done more than 16 points on 17 shots in this game. Uh, but Anderson and McDaniels in particular were very good. The Wolves offense overall, I thought, flowed pretty well. Um, again, surprisingly so, even against the zone when Anderson wasn't even on the floor at times. Um, I, I just I thought the half court offense was good. What they didn't do well in offense, turnovers. Timberwolves had 17 turnovers in this game, 15 of them by the starters, 15 turnovers by the starters. Russell had four McDaniels, Reed and Anthony Edwards each had three turnovers apiece. far too many turnovers in this game. And like I said earlier, it was like six or eight of them were in the first quarter, got them off to a rough start. And then the completion of the game, that's basically what happened down the stretch in the fourth quarter was turnovers. Um, and we'll get into that here in just a second. Uh, actually, let's do that now. Let's talk about the end of the game. So, D'Angelo Russell knocks down a three with 2.51 left on the clock. The Wolves are up five. The other end of the floor, Jaden McDaniels gets called for a foul on Jokic. It was the right call. He makes both free throws. It's a three-point game. 2.16 left in the game when Jaden McDaniels misses a three-pointer. Uh, I believe he airballed it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he did because it was after, uh, I think it was Contavious Caldwell Pope, you know, was wanting trying to sell a call, uh, an offensive foul call on the Wolves. So they were, Wolves were playing five on four to their advantage. Uh, but, didn't score McDaniels air ball to three. The nuggets come back the other way. The wolves don't really get set. And Murray kind of in the secondary break hits a three pointer to tie the game. At this point, the wolves only have one timeout. I'm sorry. They had two timeouts actually remaining at this point in the game, but they don't call one, even though it's a tie game, they come down the floor. The crowd's going crazy after Murray hits the three pointer. This is where I think Chris Finch should have called a timeout. And I, I think, I think complaining about coach timeouts. I think we do this too much. I think Finch is getting a lot of, mostly undeserved flack at this point, partially undeserved flack at this point. This is where he should have called a timeout. Nas Reed kind of, I think kind of panics, just fires the ball out of bounds on, under the baseline. He's at, or he's at the top of the, at the arc and Edwards kind of starts to cut baseline. Edward or Nas is kind of stuck, picks up his dribble, fires a pass and it, it like nowhere close. Edward stopped his cut, which isn't entirely on Nas, but it wouldn't have been a good pass anyway. Um, and ball goes out of bounds. It's now nuggets ball. Now, the Nuggets get called for an offensive foul on Jokic, which wasn't a great call. Wolves come down. D'Lo misses another three-pointer. Um, and that one goes off the side of the backboard with just over a minute to play, and it's a shot clock violation. On the other end, Murray scores. The Wolves call a timeout. They come down. Edwards misses a shot. Nuggets get the ball again. Gordon gets a dunk with 13 seconds left. The Wolves lose by four. And that was after the challenge, too, by the way. The Wolves challenged after the ball went out of bounds with 35 seconds left. It wasn't a terrible challenge in that, like, at that point in the game, the possession is so much more important because if you, like, if you lose the possession, they get the ball up to anyway. So it's worth risking your last time out. The problem is, is that they had called, they didn't call the timeout as a tie game, and then they called it right after the Nuggets took the lead, and now you've only got one left. Um, so I, I, I'm okay with the challenge there, but then when you lose it, the Nuggets get the ball, no timeouts, they go up four, and the game's effectively over with 13 seconds left and no timeouts. Um, and that's that's how this game ended. So a little bit of timeout mismanagement, certainly terrible offensive execution with, uh, what, two missed threes and a couple of turnovers, shot clock turnover and the Nas turnover over the final two and a half minutes. Not how you want to close the game at all. All right, uh, next I want to hit a couple of other key things. I want to talk Jade McDaniels' um, breakdown a couple more observations here from this game. So we're going to do that here next. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends at Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat, but don't want all the fat and calories. 
then you have to try a built bar. We just got through the holidays and I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. If you're like me where you want to eat healthier, but you don't want to compromise taste, then I've got just the thing for you. You have to try built with built healthy is actually tasty. Seriously. They're so delicious. You won't think they're good for you. Perfect for your new year's resolution. And if you're wondering what makes built bars so good, well, for starters, they're covered in hundred percent real chocolate and they come in unbelievably delicious flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is that they're healthy. Only 130 calories and four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your built bars at built.com, but now you can also get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of built bars. You can pick up a four bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate or coconut puffs. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13 bar box with the hit flavors, brownie batter and churro. And you can thank me later. All right, uh, a couple more observations from this game. I thought the Wolves did okay middle of the game on Jokic. It was early and a little bit late that he really hurt them. Um, early in the game, Nas fouled a little bit too much uh, and, and got himself into foul trouble. Then Luca Garza comes in the game, gets three fouls in like five minutes. Then Nate Knight comes in the game and gets called for, what did Nate Knight finish with? It felt like he committed four fouls in four minutes, I think all in the third quarter. Uh, so And Jokic does that, right? But... I thought for the most part, and I know that he finished with the, with the triple double. I know the Nuggets are what undefeated, I think, with his triple double, with him triple doubling. He scored 31 points. I thought for the most part, the Wolves were okay middle of the game. It was first quarter, they were terrible. The foul trouble stuff uh, throughout, I guess, and then late. Uh, but they competed. It wasn't as successful as the last time around against Denver. I talked about this on, on Wednesday's show, previewing the matchup, that the Wolves really mucked things up for Jokic a couple weeks ago. And forced him into, you know, a really tough game. And as the game wore on in this one, Jokic wore the Wolves down. Um, and 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 that was a big story. Um, Jalen Noel. Let's talk about Jalen Noel. I thought Jalen Noel had a really important stretch in the third quarter. The Nuggets had pulled within a bucket after the Wolves had been up by 8, 10 points for a lot of the early part of the third quarter. After the five-point halftime lead, they kind of held the Nuggets at arm's length for much of the third quarter. Then Denver pulls to within a basket. It was like two or three points. And then Noel hits a it's hits a mid-range jumper after a timeout, comes down, hits a three-pointer after that. A really important stretch for Jalen Noel. It was really, really good. Like, like I very important at that stage in the game. Cause that's kind of when I think a lot of Wolves fans, myself included, started to think, okay, this thing's about to get away. They're on the road. Denver's so good at home. Things are gonna spiral. It's the third quarter, right? That's been the thing all year. And then Noel kind of stemmed the tide. But then he proceeded to commit a ton of really dumb fouls. Uh, he finished this game with five fouls, and I think they all came with the Wolves in the penalty, if I'm not mistaken. At least three or four of them, I believe all five, led to free throws for Denver. Um, and, you know, offensively, again, really good. Jalen Well was four of six. He actually finished with a plus 14, which was easily the best mark on the team. So to my initial point, he was so good for that stretch of the third quarter. But it could have even been better if he hadn't made some of those committed, some of those silly fouls. And that's kind of the, I've often compared Jalen Noel to like a mix between Anthony Edwards and D'Angelo Russell, the way that he's played. If you're a long time listener, I've made that comparison before. This was like a D'Angelo Russell, like in a nutshell with Jalen Noel from that, that stretch His really his 14 minutes in this game where like all of a sudden he's a shot maker. He's super important to keep the wolves offensive float. He can get you a bucket at any time when you need it. But then he commits these silly fouls. And in D'Lo's case, it's not the silly fouls as much as it is no defense and poor shot selection, right? Or silly turnovers for Noel in this game. It was just silly fouls. So it's, it's, you know, he giveth and taketh away. That's really more the deal of comparison. And that's what Jalen Noel did in the kind of the middle stages of this game. So that was a disappointing kind of turn of events. Um, I think in general, I, I like, I, I talked a little bit about the defense already, um, but I don't know. It feels so silly when De when Denver shoots over what they shoot 53% with 122 points. But there were there were stretches of this game where it was like the late game defense against the Cavaliers. And I know I've been hanging on to that now for several days, but that that last quarter and a half against the Cavs on Saturday was so phenomenal. And there were glimpses of that. Like if you froze a couple of possessions, there was one particular possession where 
Edwards like like stunted on the left wing, got back to the right side of the floor, guarded his man, helped in the corner, somebody else helped down, and like the rotation was so crisp, it was perfect. And the Nuggets got an offensive rebound and scored. Um, those moments are such backbreakers and such morale killers for the team. If it, it, it was such a good defensive possession, and then and then it broke down. It, and it broke down when it came to rebounding the ball, which has been a theme all season. Now the wolves were a plus two in rebounding this, in this game, they only give up eight offensive rebounds to the nuggets, which you can, you can stomach that. Right. Um, so that's not a reason they lost this game. It was just kind of a good example of this game where they did so many things, right. And then when it really counted, just grab the defensive rebound and the possession, they couldn't do it. And just at the end of the game, they get up by five with under three minutes to play. You even get a stop in there. Jokic has the offensive foul, kind of a gift. I thought an iffy call against Jokic. And uh, then you you throw the ball out of bounds or you shoot the ball off the side of the backboard. Like, I I mean, think about it. The two three-point attempts the Wolves had in the final three minutes were an air ball from the corner from Jane McDaniels, a good three-point corner shooter, and D'Angelo Russell hit, hitting the side of the backboard. Like, I, I don't really understand what happened there in those final three minutes. Um, but that's, that's, that's kind of what happened in this game, right? You, you do 90% of stuff, right. And then you have the bad turnovers. You have the, 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 the bad last three minutes of the game. You have the inopportune offensive rebounds and that's what sinks the ship. Um, unfortunately I thought overall the wolves bench was good. Uh, Wendell Moore jr. Was pressed into duty because of no Austin rivers who was out with the knee. Um, I thought he played okay defensively, you know, was, was basically non-existent on offense, which was to be expected. Nate Knight had a bunch of fouls, but he competed. Luca Garza was good. Um, it, Torian Pritz was very good in this game, hit a couple of big threes in the second half. Jalen Noel, we talked about already. So good minutes from the Wolves bench as well. All right, let's close the show today by talking to individual studs and duds, as we always do on the post-game podcast. So we're going to do that here next. Today's episode of Locked on Wolves is brought to us by our friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every pro and amateur league out there. From pro football to college sports, college basketball, of course, we're in the middle of conference play for college basketball. Um, and really any sport, NHL, Super Bowl, prop betting is a ton of fun. Um, we're getting into, we're not quite to baseball yet, but not too far off. Any sport you can find at BetOnline, they have it all. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline, too. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, let's close here with individual studs and duds, as we always do on the postgame podcast. The number one stud for me in this game had to have been Jaden McDaniels. Um, really solid overall. Yes, Jamal Murray kind of went off. Uh, I guess it was third quarter. I mean, that's it's going to happen. It's Jamal Murray, right? I, I don't, and it wasn't solely on Jaden McDaniels either. He hit some tough shots. The Wolves missed some coverages. But for the most part, Jaden McDaniels is really good. 18 points on 10 shots. Another very efficient game for him from the field, which was great to see. Two of three outside the arc. Three rebounds, two assists, three blocks for him. I believe all three were on three-point attempts by Denver, if I'm not mistaken. He did have the three turnovers offensively, but um, grand scheme of things, that didn't really bother me. He had the second best plus minus of any of the Wolves starters, a minus one in this game. But again, a good game, like active with it throughout. I thought he looked like he wanted to be there, which, you know, often is the case for McDaniels. I'm not saying it isn't, but for this Wolves team in general, that's a quality that's important as sad as that is. And McDaniels showed, showed that in this game. I, I thought this was a really good game. Of course, he hit his only two, three point attempts before airballing that one in the final minutes. Um, but overall a, a strong performance from Jade McDaniels. Kyle Anderson is another stud for me in this game. 13 points, 11 rebounds led the team in rebounding. Eight assists led the team in assists. Four steals led the team in steals. Also had a block. Two turnovers, which was the least of any Timberwolves starter. 34 minutes. Um, again, 13, 11, and 8. Shot 6 of 10 from the field. Hit his only three-point attempt. Did miss both of his free throws. But a really good game from Slomo once again. We've seen a lot of that here lately. Um, as he's been so vital to at least keeping the Wolves afloat and in the conversation in that play-in kind of realm in the Western Conference. Hovering around the 500 mark. Slomo is a huge reason for that. Um, and, uh, defensively was really big in this game. Again, offensively, essentially initiating offense for large 
chunks of this game, uh, a good all around performance from Kyle Anderson. My third stud is going to be, uh, I'm going to go with Luca Garza. Um, it's either Prince or Garza. You could, you can't really go wrong. They had very similar numbers. Garza played half as many minutes, essentially, as Torian Prince. In just 17 minutes, Garza had 16 points on nine shots, three of five outside the arc, hit a big three in the second half, also missed the three that would have been huge if he'd hit it. Uh, five of six at the line, four rebounds for Garza. He battled. Jokic did get a couple offensive boards over him that hurt, uh, but Garza himself had three offensive rebounds and, and made a couple of those tough shots inside that he missed in recent games. But a solid performance off the bench. Also, Torian Prince, really good. 14 points, 5 and 9 shooting. I mentioned two big threes he hit in the second half. Four rebounds, one assist, one steal, one block for Prince. And he was a plus 5. One of only three Timberwolves with a positive individual plus minus in this game, interestingly. Noel was a plus 14. Prince was a plus 5. And Nas Reed was a plus 2. I thought Nas was good. You know, early he struggled. The middle stages of the game, though, he was fantastic. He got to the line for 10 free throw attempts. Only two Wolves players, by the way, had more free throw attempts than Ants three. Garza had six and Nas Reed had 10. So the Wolves trying to get Jokic in foul trouble and they succeeded. I mean, Jokic committed five fouls and, and the first one that he committed was overturned. So that could have been six had the Nuggets not challenged the first one. Um, but I thought Nas, other than the beginning and some stuff at the end, that really bad turnover, et cetera, was really good in the middle. You just, he's got to do more than three rebounds if he's your starting center. It's always been the biggest issue with Nas, in my opinion, is the lack of defensive rebounding uh, skill that he shows. He's got to up that. Um, that was really the biggest thing that obviously that turnover at the end, but um, a good game overall from Nas Reed. I don't really have any duds in this game. D'Angelo Russell, like the play, there was a stretch in the third quarter that was bad. There was the air or the um, the side of the backboard shot. He did have four turnovers, Those those that bad stretch. You know, he threw the ball. I think he thought, the referee was McDaniels and threw the ball to the ref at one point. Like there was a real rough stretch in there. He was very quiet early, but hit some big threes right after halftime. And that really big one with under three minutes to play finished with 13 and seven, but zero rebounds in 32 minutes and four turnovers is not great. Um, I don't know that there really is a dud though. I thought collectively the wolves played well and individually for the most part, they did as well in this game. All right. Uh, that's all we have for this one. I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's not much else to say. The wolves played well. I know nobody wants to hear about moral victories. The, the close to the game was not a moral victory. The last three minutes were brutal for the wolves, especially, uh, offensively. Um, but overall they played well in a very tough place to play against the best team in the West who they just beaten a couple weeks ago. Very shorthanded, no go bear, no towns, no, no, uh, Austin rivers, no Jordan McLaughlin, the whole thing. So all that to say, not a terrible loss. The problem is that they turn around and play, what, from when this game ended? Like, what is that, 18, 19 hours before they play 7 p.m. Central back at Target Center against Toronto? Schedule makers did no favors to the Wolves. That's a tough back-to-back. Uh, -back. Obviously, it's a winnable game at home against Toronto, but you're at a significant rest and travel disadvantage. Uh, Toronto's 20 and 25 on the season, but um, you know, relatively healthy at this point. And playing better of late, they've won three of five and just lost to Milwaukee in a competitive game the other night. So uh, not an easy game by any means for Minnesota with the severe rest disadvantage. We'll see if Gobert plays. Um, it's, he was questionable on Wednesday, so th there seems to be a chance he plays on Thursday. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. We'll, of course, go live with the postcast following the game. We'll also do the postgame podcast for Friday's show. So a big thank you to those of you that do follow and subscribe to Lockdown Wolves and make us your first listen every day. Of course, you can find the show everywhere. That includes YouTube as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. You can also watch on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Download Lockdown Sports Minnesota app today on those two platforms, and you can get more great local sports coverage 24-7. It's absolutely free. Follow on Twitter at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K E N. Of course, the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on the biggest stories. Now make your second listen, the Game to Game NBA podcast, every moment, every top performance, and every result. Lockdown Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Lockdown can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Lockdown NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.